Do you remember MapQuest and what a pain it was to print out step-by-step -step instructions that you had to sift through while driving? Well, we've come a long way since then. Now, over 1 billion people rely on navigation apps for directions and avoiding traffic. But according to a study from the Texas A&M Traffic Institute and INRIX, in 2012, Americans lost 47 hours to congestion, and by 2017, that number had increased to 54 hours. So what could be contributing to the rise in hours? Well, it turns out these apps are playing a big role in increased traffic. In 2005, Google Maps launched as a web application, followed shortly by Waze in 2006. Initially, navigation apps relied on the data from a limited number of digital map makers. Companies such as Navtech and TomTom would only update this information on a quarterly, each year basis. And in between these periods of time, routing directions wouldn't change. Roads were represented under five different classes, from freeways to side streets, and were designated to only withstand a certain number of vehicles each hour. GPSs and apps used this information in order to calculate all possible routes for users before they even left their driveways. As the apps began moving to smartphones, the method in which they built maps evolved. Instead of relying on data from specific digital map makers, they began collecting data from users. This caused the algorithms to change. Instead of identifying all possible routes, the apps only displayed a few possible routes as remote searches became too complex. Soon, drivers received routing updates in real time, rather than just alerts of traffic ahead. When you're driving along, if it's doing dynamic routing is what we call it. So it will say, I think I've found a better path that can save you 10 minutes. Here's the new path, and off you go in the new direction. As the amount of hours spent in traffic increased, the University of California Berkeley Institute of Transportation Studies launched a study to explore why this might be happening. So the Institute ran two simulations that showed how traffic responded to an accident on a freeway with and without navigation apps. The outcome showed that traffic was actually worse in the simulation when just 20% of drivers were using apps as opposed to none. Congestion increased as drivers were being instructed to exit onto alternate routes to avoid the accident. This clogged ramps and created more traffic on the freeway. Additionally, the secondary routes weren't designed for the increased vehicle influx. But an increase in traffic congestion wasn't only occurring in simulations. It's appearing in cities across the world, and many blame the growth in navigation app usage. Now, several are fighting back against apps like Waze and Google Maps. One place that was negatively impacted from navigation apps was Leonia, New Jersey, as shown in this CBS News story. This is what it can look like on the once quiet streets of Leonia. The town sits next to some of the most congested roads in the country. When drivers opened their apps on these busy freeways for directions, they were redirected onto alternative nearby routes, which included the streets of Leonia. But these smaller side streets weren't meant to handle more cars. About 2,000 motorists rerouted into the town every day, specifically onto a street called Fort Lee Road. Leonia residents became frustrated as some couldn't even move out of their driveway certain days. So the city decided to fight back, by closing 60 streets during rush hour to non-residents. It posted signs and issued yellow car tags to residents. Any drivers found on the roads without these tags were fined $200. According to residents quoted in a New York Times article, the strict rules improved congestion. However, local businesses reported losses and believed signs were scaring off potential non-residential customers. The law was later amended to clarify that anyone visiting the town specifically for business was permitted. It's not only smaller towns that are being affected by navigation apps. Big cities like Los Angeles are battling an increase in traffic as well. One major problem with the apps is that they don't account for changes in infrastructure to move traffic in the most efficient way. If you think about a digital algorithm, right, it just kind of says, well, there's a road here, I can put people on it. And so there is more to that. There, it could be a road that's kind of skinny and people park and it really is kind of a one lane road even, even though it's not categorized as a one lane road. Take Baxter Street in Los Angeles, for example, that was featured in this CBS News story. The road poses dangers to drivers as it sits at more than a 30% grade. That's steeper than Lombard Street in San Francisco. However, the apps just recognized it as any other road and kept sending drivers down it, causing several crashes. 
So in order to reduce traffic and accidents, the city changed it to a one-way street downhill. LA decided to confront the navigation apps themselves. In 2019, the city council approved a pilot program to reduce the rerouting of vehicles on side streets and invited Waze and Google Maps to participate. However, both declined and offered to keep an open dialogue instead. In a further attempt, transportation officials proposed a motion that would prohibit apps from rerouting traffic inconsistent with city street designs, such as these steep grades. As of October 2019, it was still awaiting city approval. As Waze and Google Maps continue to not address these issues, more cities are devising their own strategies in the battle against navigation apps. Fremont, California delayed traffic signals on main roads, and one resident in Tacoma Park, Maryland, even began reporting fake traffic jams on his street to deceive the software. However, navigation apps do have several options for potential solutions. Hani Mamasani, a traffic expert at Northwestern University, offers one idea. Right now, the focus has been very much on helping you, the individual user, uh, you know, sort of beat the system, but you cannot do that when so many users are receiving the same information. You want to then also um, not give the same information to everybody. You want to allocate, okay? You want to allocate people to different paths. And optimally, the right thing to do is everybody shares the same information back to the set, right? That everybody pushes their information to the same place, and then you get a uh, full uh, understanding of what's happening, and then you can route people accordingly. I don't know that that will ever happen because they can't share that data. Um, the providers have very uh, detailed information about where you are and where you're going, and uh, that uh, is a privacy concern. While the apps might be working towards ways to alleviate traffic issues, it is inherently the overuse of them that sits at the root of it all. But this is exactly what is driving the need for their regulation. As the apps continue to ignore cities' pleas for help, more will be forced to devise their own solutions in the meantime.